again welcome to our first class of English literature. Today I have selected one play. The name is The Emperor Jones by uh, written by Eugene O'Neill, the famous writer. This play belongs to American literature. Yes, this was the play that reflected racism that was prevalent in those times in United States. So first, let us know about the author. It is very important that when we study any topic of literature, whether it is drama or it's a play or it's a novel, it is necessary for the students to keep a pen and book in front of you and note down the important points. So let's start. First, author's biography. Now about the author. Eugene O'Neill, he was born as the son of an extremely popular American stage actor named James O'Neill. Yes, his genes he derived from his father, his talent of writing such fantastic plays like the Emperor Jones was derived from his, was inherited from his father. Now his childhood, his childhood it is said was very unhappy. He received very unhappy and a disturbed family situations and this disturbed his childhood and this disturbed childhood was reflected in his plays and in his writings in future. Now about its studying, he studied only for one year at Harvard University, yes the famous university and there he enhanced his art of playwriting under famous teacher George Pierce Baker. Yes, it is important to mention the name of this great teacher which made him talented in the art of playwriting. Now, after his this uh, play was launched, he became enormously successful and he was the first American playwright to earn international reputation and he won America's first Nobel Prize for Literature in 1936. Yes, students, please note down all these important facts about Eugene O'Neill. Now, his death, as it is said that when he was born, he was born in a rented hotel room. And it is ironical on his side that when he died again, he died in a rented hotel room. After uh, decreasing health, he uh, at the last he died with pneumonia. So this was a short life sketch, uh, uh, we can say an author's biography. Now coming back to his famous play that is The Emperor Jones. This play can be studied under following headings. First is the plot summary. Now the plot summary is divided into eight scenes. Then comes characters. The main characters in this play are Jeff, Brutus Jones, the main hero of the play, Henry Smithers, witch doctor, witch doctor reflects superstitious and orthodox background of the society of United States prevailing in those times. Then the last little formless fears yes these things little formless fears they are mentioned under the heading of main characters of the play the emperor jones because these formless fears reflect the guilt they are we can say one of the chief character or characters in this play then comes the third and important point is race and racism race and racism was a socially evil practice that was prevalent uh, in United States in the society of America in those times. So the play also has glimpses of this race and racism concept. Now first we'll discuss about the characters. If we study the characters in depth then it is easy for us to understand the play that what the writer wants to message us what the writer wants to reflect in his play through his characters. 
So let's proceed towards the characterization. The first character is Jeff. The black man Brutus Jones killed over a crap game. We can see a game of dice which Brutus Jones and his colleague in the jail was playing uh, in the United States before the action of the play began. Now this character appears in scene third as one of the Jones hallucination. Jeff is brown rather than black skinned, thin, middle aged and dressed in a Pullman Potter's uniform. In Jones' hallucination, Jeff tosses the dice like a robot. Yes, it is said that Jeff was killed at the hands of Brutus Jones before he became emperor. They both were playing and as it is said that Brutus Jones was loose-tempered person. So, uh, he was not able to bear the wrong uh, tricks which uh, was played by the Jeff when they were playing the game of crap or dice. So, he just uh, took a gun and shot him that. So, it was the first crime committed by Brutus Jones. Later on, he was jailed for 10 years imprisonment but in a few days, he somehow managed to escape from the jail and he just landed to the island of West Indies. So, this is the description we have about the character Jeff. Next character is Brutus Jones himself. Now, about his physical appearance, Brutus Jones is a tall and powerfully built American Negro. Yes, American Negro, man of middle age, around 40s. Formerly a Pullman porter or car porter in the United States, Jones comes to the West Indian island where the play takes place and becomes emperor after convincing the natives that he has magical powers. Yes, the natives of West Indies were very innocent and ignorant and illiterate people whom Brutus made fool of them. And somehow he became successful in proving that he possessed some magical features and he is fit to rule those innocent people. Due to his personality, due to his presentation to the natives, somehow he managed to become their ruler and the natives respected him with fear. His eyes, yes, the main physical feature of Brutus Jones is his eyes. They indicate extraordinary cunning, intelligence and a careful shrewdness. Yes, definitely he was a very shrewd, very sharp-minded person. He knew the quality how to make fool of the stupid and innocent people that is the natives of West Indies and he was successful in doing that. Now, to make himself appear regal, Jones wears a light blue uniform decorated with brass buttons and heavy gold chavrons and braids. His pants are bright red with a light blue stripe down the side. He wears patent leather boots with a long barreled pearl handed revolver. In the play, he speaks with a strongly marked black dialect. Who dare whistle that way in my palace? Who dares to whistle in my palace? When I am the king, I have all the authority. Who dares to whistle in my palace? Now, this was the attitude of Emperor Jones when he used to talk with his men, with the public of West Indies. Jones is filled with contempt for the former exploiter of the islanders, the white man smithers. Previously, before Jones visited the island of West Indies, smithers, John Smithers, he ruled that island, he governed that island and he hated that thing. Now, to make himself appear real, this thing is to be noted. In order to make himself royal, in order to present himself like a royal king, this means that Brutus Jones did not belong to a royal family or a royal blood. Previously, we know he was a criminal, he killed a person, he was sent to jail, then uh, adopting some uh, wicked policies, he somehow managed to escape from jail and then he landed on this island of West Indies. He made fool those natives, those innocent and illiterate natives and 
with the fear of his personality and with the with the use of his wicked mind he somehow used to uh, govern them became the ruler a forcible ruler of west indies so this was the characterization of brutus jones being a little softer on his side we can write this thing in our personal comments that a person having such a background as brutus jones possessed there are no chances of any good future you are getting my point so uh, we can say that a person a criminal like brutus jones is likely to have this sort of future now comes lem yes another character in the play a former chieftain we can say a former leader on the island and the leader of the natives who finally rebel against jones dictatorial rule yes the rule of brutus jones was very dictatorial people the natives used to be very uh, fearful with him lamb appears on stage only in the last scene just noted down where he is dressed in a loin cloth with a revolver and cartridge belt around his waist this was his uh, dressing sense Lam hates Jones and once hired another native to shoot him but the gun misfired Lam used to hate Jones and he used to hate Jones to such an extent that he hired some outsider to shoot him that but somehow the gun missed fire and uh, Brutus Jones was saved now this was the characterization of Lam then here one thing comes across us that is a silver bullet now the concept of silver bullet is also very important to understand over here brutus jones he in the beginning he just governed the minds of the innocent uh, he used to say bush nigers of west indies the native people of west indies so he just forecasted himself that he possessed some magical features some magical elements and uh, the secrecy of his death is he will never going to be killed by a simple common shot by any of the people his the secret of his death lies with himself he used to carry a silver bullet always with him and he showed that silver bullet to the natives of west indies and declared that uh, god has destined him that he would only be uh, killed only by this silver bullet which belongs to him now this concept came to his mind when he noticed that the natives of the island of west indies were very very poor and in their whole life they can never earn sufficient money to just uh, buy so uh, so much silver and then mold that silver in the form of a bullet and then plan to revolt against brutus and kill him he has never imagined that uh, this could be done by the natives but the reality is in the end of the play brutus jones is uh, dead by the same silver bullet which was molded by the natives so this was the characterization and the main points about brutus jones and about now comes henry smithers who was henry smithers smithers is tall bald stoop shouldered cockney englishman about 40 years old who was successfully exploiting the black natives before brutus jones arrived on the island yes smithers naturally pasty face has taken on a sickly yellow pale color and his nose is red from extensive drinking of native rum he was not a nice guy smithers has a small sharp features including a pointed nose and little red rimmed eyes he is mean selfish cowardly but dangerous how come dangerous he used to talk in a friendly manner in front of jones because now jones is no more his colleague who used to assist him in theft or in looting people before when he met him for the first time in united states now the situation is almost opposite now his co previous colleague or assistant jones is now the emperor jones so now he talked him in a friendly manner 
and he respected him but only in outward form. In his heart, he deeply hated Brutus. Afraid of Jones but openly defiant, as I said, and is clearly delighted with Jones' downfall. Yes, in his heart, he is always delighted at the downfall of Jones. So, look at the position of a person. When a person is um, uh, given a higher post or given some name and fame, then uh, everybody used to talk us in a friendly and dignified way. But the real thing is their inner thoughts. Inner thoughts of people like Henry Smithers, they always differ from their outer wordings, from their outer expressions. Now comes the another character that is witch doctor. Now witch doctor in our ordinary language we can say uh, those uh, tantrics or the jhadfuk wala baba, uh, babajis we can say. So these people uh, superstitious and orthodox people in the name of religion they used to loot the people and hurt the sentiments of the public. So Jones last hallucination in scene 7 includes this dancing and chanting people of primitive African society. Yes, the witch doctor is shriveled old and naked except for the fur of some small animal tied about his waist, its bushy tail hanging down in front. This was the dress up of witch doctor. Naked except his body is stained a bright red. He is antelope horns on his head and he carries a bone rattle and a charm stick made of white cockatoo feathers. The witch doctor finally indicates that Jones must serve as the ritual sacrifice for a crocodile god. Here crocodile is assumed as god and Brutus Jones the emperor is supposed to offer some ritual sacrifices in front of that crocodile god. And this witch doctor or doctor of medicine or tantric whatever we can say a cure uh, a person supposed to cure the people from different ailments or diseases he convinces Jones to perform such sacrifices and he dances madly chanting some or the other his uh, we can say his foolish mantras from the nearby river. Now, this god crocodile is supposed to live in a nearby river. However, Jones' last act is to defy the sacrifice and shoot his pistol and the remaining silver bullet into the crocodile apparition. Yes, this is the last scene that reflects the death of Brutus Jones, the great emperor. I hope this short lecture on the emperor Brutus Jones written by Eugene O'Neill gives you some knowledge, some clarification about this play. We will soon meet with another part of this play. Thanking you. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, comment, share and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and visit us our website on gurukpo.com.